So here's a picture of what this looks like today. I think we're all familiar with the Gulf Stream, and we're down the street here, and this condominium here. And so that's what it looks like today in its existing condition. And then go to the next page, which is pop down. What this shows is that if you did a hotel project, which would allow you to go to 65 feet, this is the type of building that could actually be built on the property next door. You'll see in the distance um, another new building down here, and then way in the distance behind this community, you can see a little bit of the edge of what might have happened with um, the Chase Bank building. Um, there are some caveats, and we'll look at this in a minute. One of the challenges that the, the architects had designing was that because of our <coughs> block size and our lot configurations, it's very difficult to provide the required parking for a big building. So you're going to see that in some cases, the zoning couldn't be maxed out because the parking couldn't be fit, allowed there. But there, there could be some creative things done, which may or may not happen, but we'll see. Um, this is the Bank of America site, and I think everybody's familiar with two J's. And then here's Wells Fargo site on this side, and then right behind it, here is the Chase Bank site, which is actually an entire block. Um, top down. This is where it got to be an interesting study. Um, is that on the Bank of America site, since it's, it's, it's limited, there are some historic buildings behind it, and the property is only um, half a block deep. <coughs> to, to do a development that had it, that met the required parking, this building can only be two stories. For it to get higher than that, the parking would have to be somewhere else. Um, on the Wells Fargo site, which is much longer, and we'll look at that and study a little bit more, you could do potentially a 65-foot building on the corner. But the parking garage is in the back, and it's, it's a three or four foot parking garage. It's basically 35 feet tall. This tall building here, which is um, sharing the back side, this building is designed with the assumption that its parking is somewhere else. Um, knowing that this parcel, you couldn't fit a parking garage in to, to support this entire building. So the chances of this building happening are remote, unless there were somebody who found enough land to build a parking garage somewhere else. And most people are going to want a parking garage attached to it. So that one probably wouldn't be able to happen. And then you'll see in the distance the larger project that's the Chase Bank site, which is the next building, the next study. Because Chase Bank has everything on an entire block, and it, there is an alley running through it. So this is what it looks like today. This is the Chase Bank site. There's a little store buildings here and some one from distance. Um, and this is a project where it's completely, absolutely maxed out. This is this doesn't include the required parking. What it require is vacation of the alley, and the entire building can't be 65 feet tall because it ran out of square footage. Because remember, we have a floor area ratio limit. So there are little towers at the four corners, and there's basically a hole in the middle, which we'll see in the middle in a minute. So this was absolutely as possibly as big as that building could get. Um, there are setbacks that I talked about along the street, um, and this is, Totally maxed off, I said, is as big as it possibly get. Um, go to the next one, and then there's a. Where this came from, the, the picture you saw earlier is from a program called SketchUp, which is architectural um, drafting based. And so you can see where this building's parking is provided in the back, this building's parking is provided here, and because of the limit on how big the building could be, there's a public plaza here because you couldn't build this park building unless the building were much shorter. Um, this building doesn't have parking. Its parking is somewhere else. This is a large Chase Bank building. With, this is the parking garage on the, in, on the interior of it. And so the building is a little tower here, a tower here, a tower on four corners. What, could you say park. what streets they are? Oh, this is Federal. I think this is O and Ocean Breeze. Ocean. And then there's Palm, Palm View, Palm View. And then Lakeside and Golf. Um, these two buildings also had the assumption that they provided parking somewhere else. And then with the addition to the Gulf Stream down here, you'll see a parking garage with four stories in the back on that side. Those are the only locks that really um, were in play because many of the other buildings are either in historic districts or designated. And it couldn't be torn down and be very difficult to develop. So um, we had them do these. Um, such as the massing study of what could happen. And so some of the, the caveats that are in the land development regulations that require um, 
that require buildings to be set back after the second floor unless the whole building is pulled back in a public plaza or an arcade is provided on the front. There are two numbers that are in play. One is the lot area of the building, and one is the lot area that's impermeable surface, which is inclusive of parking garage and like paving. So right now, whereas under the code you can cover 75, actually I think it's 90% of this lot of the building, you can't under the new code. It's limited to 55% of the lot being covered by a building, and 75% by the building and whatever impermeable surface will be required for parking. We love to ask questions down. We're getting very close to asking okay. questions. Um, well, so the brown ones are historic buildings, and the white ones are ones that they, I had this all color coded, and we're having to fix it because they're the gold stream should be color coded or historic, and there should be some along here that should be color historic. That didn't translate in the because I've been sending information back and forth to Miami for a few months on this. Um, these buildings, like we know, this office building is there. It's like it could, in theory, be torn down, um, but we didn't think it would be. Uh, and so that's, that's the distinction between the white and the yellow. Uh, is, this this the US one? Pardon? is this US-1? Is this US-1? This federal? No, this right here is federal. Okay. Okay. Which used to be US-1. Okay. <laughs> and then this is off to the beach. Right. So that's our rendering study that shows how the LDR will work. Um, there are some pieces in there to describe um, how the architecture will work, and so we, I asked the person to, or actually the team of people, to do sort of a collection of different kinds of architectural styles. So we have an art modern, art deco, streamline modern building. We have more of a, a modern interpretation of Mediterranean, a modern building. Uh, this is sort of a deco inspired something, and this was sympathetic to the Gulf Stream because Lake Worth has a very eclectic um, mixture of architecture. And I, would not be a proponent to say we have to build a certain style. We don't want to make it look very fake in like Disney World because there are some things that kind of come kind of looking like that. So um, I'll open the floor for questions and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Would yes, you this on the yes. And we can go back to whatever you, whatever other image that we've shown you want to see. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't, I don't have a rendered evaluator. I only have this discussion. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm wondering, you know, as you were going along, you would often say that certain things couldn't happen because right. they would be against the rules or against code or whatever. But then there's this added value mm -hmm. idea that means that a developer perhaps can do the thing that's against code yes. if he plants trees in Bryant Park or things like that. There are two things. This, this shows the absolute maximum the developer can do if they did every community benefit or bonus incentive they were required to do. They've actually had to include in their project or pay all the incentive <coughs> value to get to that sixth floor. Okay. So, um, but the added value, can it, can it be used, um, can it be used to change the setback, for example? No. There actually, our code is set up and it's a little different than what it is now. I've set up that the, the, the setbacks in certain places are fixed. The building has to address the street. It can't be put way back, it can't be moved really forward. There's no variance allowed on height. There's no variance allowed on lock coverage. There's no variance allowed on impermeable surface coverage. Um, the only variance that would be technically allowed right now is if you have a really weird site and the building couldn't, say, address the street. And in this area, in most of the city, we don't have that problem. What we did do as well is we recognize the fact that we have what are called small lots, medium lots, and big lots in our work. Um, our code right now generally requires you to get a variance to develop on a 25 foot lot, which we have hundreds of them. We have put in the LDR a provision so you can develop on a 25 foot lot by right. It limits what you can do on it more than what you could do on a larger lot, but it allows you to put something on it so we don't have the challenge. It would be one of the largest numbers of variances that were ever awarded. Um, we're dealing with putting a building on a 25 foot lot. So we've actually done a gradation so that we these what are called non-conforming lots can be developed um, in a sympathetic, appropriate manner compared to what is in the city. Added value just worries me, though. It mm -hmm. seems to me that we should have uh, a code that we believe in, that we stick to, and why have this loophole allowing people to do other projects that supposedly help the city to get around our rules? Well, we have, we have rules. Where, what is different about our code, and I, it's hard to explain, is that most cities require you to do more <coughs> 